Hello everyone. My name is Conrad Henson. I'm from Open Text, and the nice people at Henry Stewart Conferences have asked me to share some tips and tricks that I've learned through nearly a decade of working on multiple enterprise dam solutions. Uh, so the topic that I'm going to be talking through today is the importance of user engagement in delivering value and how a dam can only deliver value if you design for user engagement. So what you'll often see when looking at the value of a dam to an enterprise is a list of, of topics like reducing agency fees, uh, improving customer experience, maximizing asset utilization, improving visibility and insight, optimizing brand consistency, reuse, repurpose, accelerating time to market, and increased return on investment. So that's how the business case is built, and that is genuinely the potential value that a dam can give. But how close will you get to, the quest, get, get to that potential? The question becomes, how much value can your platform deliver? And the answer is, not a lot if nobody's using it. I talked with some people a few months ago, and one of them said, I've put in lots of dam systems. No one uses them. And in my opinion, that says more about the way they set up their project than the system itself or the value that a digital asset management solution can give. So the real thing is, whether it's DAM or another digital experience system like web content management, implementing and developing that system should always consider user engagement. So we're going to go through some tips on how to maximize user engagement and therefore maximize the value that you can get out of the DAM. The first tip I get, I'll give is that you have to own the vision. Somebody has to own the vision. You have to define the main purpose of the dam and what value that will return to the users and to the company. And that vision has to be bought into by as senior in the, in the company as you can possibly get, senior management stakeholder. And your dam team and any champions that you have around the company must buy into that vision as a consistent message. Now that vision will vary between companies. But if you unify behind a single consistent vision, then you've got a clear statement to give to all of the users and to increase your ability to engage them. The next one is about guiding, not dictating. So I've seen lots of systems, not just DAM, lots of systems, where they put very strict work workflows in with the intention of driving consistency and efficiency. But the problem is, is that if you put very strict workflows in from the start in a big change program, people will find workarounds around the system. They'll do lip service, box ticking. They'll find a way to move the process outside of the system. So the, the watchword I have is that the phrase that I use is, if you want users to do things a certain way, you must make that the easiest way to meet their objectives. Over time, you can evolve and tighten validation to nudge everyone into an optimal workflow. But you will learn over the time, and that might not be the, the workflow that you thought it would look like. The next tip I give is listening to your customers. Now, your customers might be end customers, but more likely, if you're in a dam project, your customers are going to be your internal users, and maybe agencies, that kind of thing. So there's a concept within Lean called going to the Gemba or going to the factory floor or to the coal face, I've heard a lot of people say. And that is really valuable for learning what, what users actually need. You've got to use their language. And by that, I mean their jargon, their acronyms, their terminology. You've got to use that language within the system so that it looks familiar at speaking their language back in them. You need to demonstrate that they are listened to by reporting back to them regularly. If you're delivering new functionality every month, then every month you go back and tell them what you've done. If you're delivering it every quarter, then you need to be um, delivering, uh, reporting back to them at least every quarter. But I, I would say monthly is a, is a minimum. And you need to include champions from the business in fact finding, validation, testing, and even involve those champions in your celebrations, in your milestones. The next I'd say is providing a consistent experience, providing consistent experiences across systems through the stack. So if you've got a user set that is going to be moving between multiple systems, say a product information management system, a digital asset management system, a content management system, product lifecycle management, 
design tools try and create a consistent experience as they move between those those systems now it doesn't have doesn't mean that they need to have a unified user interface but making sure that the language and the terminology and the timelines are consistent across those multiple multiple uh, systems and let them follow the journey of the asset that they have to follow without interruption so if you can provide the experience where they never have to leave their their own home system to do these uh, these other things that is ideal the next one would be to build for performance now today users expect their business tools to be like e-commerce sites for speed and usability so be ambitious with your performance requirements most e-commerce sites will try and look for a two to three second uh, page load time. That's probably a, going a little too far uh, if, it's, if it's difficult, but five to six seconds isn't unreasonable and go as, as, uh, as quickly, as responsive a system as you possibly can. So design for performance. Look at your database and optimizing that. Caching. Uh, when you're branding a, a, an interface, make sure those brand elements are lightweight. Make sure the pages can load quickly that a user's actions are reflected quickly. Try to eliminate any of those waiting times or, or spinning icons. And remember that not all users will have the same network bandwidth. So go to where the worst situation is. Go to somebody working on Wi-Fi in a basement somewhere, or go for your, your person working in a buying office in the Far East. If they're gonna be using your system, work out what their experience is gonna be and do some checks there. And for the most frequent user actions and journeys, set up automated testing. Do automated performance testing and test often within your release schedule. Every, every change, every major change you make, you should be evaluating whether it's making a performance improvement or a performance deterioration. And you need to make those decisions with the knowledge of the impact it's going to have on the users. Now, it's normal when doing iterative development, when going through agile development, uh, for performance to slip over time. It's, you're going to be adding more complexity in the system and some things that you thought were simple and have, would have no impact, you'll find suddenly have a big performance impact. So allocate a percentage of your time to performance. Allocate uh, a, a sprint every three or four or a, a, a 10 or 20% allocation just to do optimizing performance. The next tip I'd give would be staying on the path. And by, what, by that, I mean the upgrade path. So vendors like OpenText are constantly developing the core product. And unless you're using a SaaS solution, uh, you will be having to schedule upgrades. So what you want to do is to, you want to be able to access the improvements within those upgrades as easily and as quickly as possible. If you can upgrade easily, then that is cheap development for you. The, the vendors will be adding features which may or may not be applicable to your use case, but you want to be able to access the ones that are applicable to you as quickly as possible. So access that cheap development by making sure that the development that you do doesn't clash with that, doesn't make it too hard to upgrade. So extend, don't rebuild. Don't go into the core of the system and make big changes. Add bits to the outside, use APIs, use uh, recognized and supported extension points. Uh, that way you're more likely to be compatible with the next version of the software and therefore you can access those improvements quickly and easily with a minimum of testing and delay. So those are some tips that I've found incredibly helpful over the years. There are plenty of other tools in the toolkit. There are some genuine experts in user engagement and if you're doing a big project and you're going to be having hundreds or even thousands of users that need to be able to use this system and be productive within the system, involve an expert. They are worth their weight in gold. Have an engagement plan. Work out who you're going to talk to, how frequently you're going to be communicating with them, what methods you're going to be using to communicate to them. Make sure that it's something that they can access easily. Uh, it's it's no point in choosing to use Yammer if a part of the company doesn't use Yammer. Find something that everybody's going to want to use. Really important, don't disappear. 
it is so common and uh, particularly under waterfall style projects you talk to them for for a few months gather a bunch of requirements disappear for six months come back and say here's what you wanted don't disappear keep on talking to them make sure that they know your progress so that there aren't those surprises either way because uh, businesses change the whatever the the world is doing the world moves on and uh, if you won't know that something has changed in the business unless you keep on talking to them. Be open to those challenges that come through. You might have a senior management change and suddenly the, the goalposts have changed. The goalposts have moved. You need to be open to those challenges while still trying to lock down, trying to maintain your independence so that you can deliver to your original goals. It's a delicate balancing act, but be open to the challenges because sometimes they will open up fantastic opportunities. And most important of all, show you are listening. Show you're listening to stakeholders, to the users. Not all of these things are going to be applicable to your business. But have a look through them, see what tools in the toolkit are applicable to you. And there are genuine experts out there who can help. A digital asset management solution cannot deliver its full potential without people using it. So make sure that you design your system for user engagement and you're well on the way to a successful, sustainable dam project. Thank you very much.